y'all. Um, I was in a good mood before I came home, but um, anyway, I just came back from Bible study and it was just amazing like it always is. I have been going to church recently, but it's not Look, if it was an apostate place, I wouldn't be there. <laughs> but, um, oh my God. So, I'm not sure if my other video uploaded yet or not, but just in case it didn't, I'm probably going to delete it anyway. I shared with y'all in my other video where I was acting a fool and jumping on the bed and just getting excited about the Lord and everything. Well, how he's been speaking to me a lot more and a lot more clearly lately in crazy, crazy ways. And, um, one thing he did... I think I already spoke about that with the book yeah okay so what God's been doing a lot lately is I was saying how I haven't really just been going to him and like before him in prayer and stuff to ask him stuff I've just been thinking it in my head or I'll be you know inquiring something in my heart and the Lord will answer or he'll provide an answer according to what I was thinking I never even went to go pray it yet so um <laughs> that's what he's been doing lately and He's never really just done that before. And I was just asking my brother in Christ. I was like, I don't know if it's just me because I'm getting closer to God or if he's doing that with everybody because it's the last days and he should, I don't know, but that's what he's doing now. And um, so I went to church, right? And oh my God, it was women's Bible study tonight, Tuesday night. And the lady, she was up there speaking. And um, I have them pray for me so I can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which I've been praying for. And I didn't expect for it to happen right then and there. And um, which maybe was a hindrance because I know that you're supposed to come in complete faith when you act or something like that. I have no clue why God hasn't given me the baptism yet. I've been saved since I was 15. And I'm so instant with the Holy Spirit. God speaks to me. I know how to pray in the Spirit, but I've never received the baptism with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And it's not just a gift. There's two. There's one is a gift. And then there's just, you know, the baptism. But I've never received it yet. And it kind of makes me feel some type of way <laughs> because I don't, I don't want to say it angers me. It just, it really discourages me, honestly, just as a believer, considering how close I am to God. And I look at other people who are speaking in tongues and I'm like, why can't I do it? And, you know, they say, well, you just receive it and just believe that you have it and you just start speaking. I'm not, I get irritated when I hear that because I've done all of that before. I've done the sitting on my bed and waiting and just asking God, you know, believing that he's going to give it to me and nothing happens. Or, you know, they say, open up your mouth and talk. I've done that. So it's just, it's really irritating. <laughs> and I have a book by Derek Prince and he has a book, um, talking about how to receive the Holy Spirit or the baptism. And in his book, and which I trust Derek Prince's judgment, because he was the only one that I know of so far that was casting out demons and healing the sick, you know, real talk. So I'm going to believe what Derek Prince says. And he says it's Jesus' choice to baptize you when he wants to. Because when John the Baptist was about to baptize Jesus, he said, there's one greater than me that's coming who's going to baptize you with fire and with the Spirit. So Jesus is the one who baptizes us. So I guess that kind of gives me a little bit, I guess I'm just impatient and just, I don't know. I just, I do get kind of angry when I think about it, but it kind of helps me a little bit if I'm like, well, maybe I don't have it yet because Jesus don't want to do it yet. Maybe it's not the right time. And when he's ready to, he'll baptize me. But, um, I don't know. I'm just, I can tell at that church as well too, that, um, they're not, they're Holy Spirit filled. Don't get me wrong, honey. They are, but I can tell they're kind of nervous and shy when it comes to just jumping into spiritual things. I'm a very hyperactive person <laughs> when it comes to spiritual things. Like tonight in church, I was sitting there just shaking like I'd be doing in my videos. I don't just do it on camera. I'll be doing it in real life. I just get so excited <laughs> about the Lord. <laughs> I really do, but I don't know. I was just sitting there just jittery just the whole time, just excited. And then she's like giving me confirmation. God's giving me confirmation through her. So I'm just like, yes, yes, you know. And um, But yeah, I can tell they're kind of shy because like when she was praying over me to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I do believe this. I, I, think, I think God will do things like that, not only in his timing, but if both people are coming to him in complete faith, I think that's like one ingredient that's really, really, that's like the foundation of
the food. <laughs> like, you need that ingredient. And I can tell that they were kind of doubting whether I'd receive it or not because she was speaking and praying. And I guess she didn't want to make a scene like, well, if it doesn't happen, I don't want to not look bad because she's not like that at all. It was just kind of like, oh, well, you know. And she kind of eased into saying, uh, well, when you go home, just speak to God and, um, you know, ask him to manifest and believe that you've received the gift. And I was just receiving it because I understood what she was doing. She didn't want to make a scene like she was praying and asking God to do it, but nothing was happening. So she didn't want to be like, you know. And um, other people were standing in agreement. The they were praying around me, but I noticed that they even kind of backed away when they saw nothing was happening. So I was like, you know what? My imagination, not just my imagination, because one thing the Holy Spirit taught me is the Holy Spirit actually told me to use my imagination when it comes to worshiping God, because everything that you imagine or think about comes from the spiritual realm. There's nothing that you've ever thought about or fantasize, you know, we call it fantasy, imagination, whatever. OK, that does not exist because your understanding is limited for one. So if you have thought of anything like when I pray and I'm praying like I'm binding spirits and stuff or when I'm praying over a large group of people, I literally visualize. You, you, yeah, you can say visualize or imagine a whole bunch of people just together and they're just still. And I'm speaking when I'm praying, I'm speaking over these people. It's a dark room. That just helps me. That's how the Holy Spirit taught me to pray with anything, really. Even when I'm worshiping. Ah! I'm sorry. Hold on. I just thought about Jesus and I got kind of. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. Um, okay. When I'm worshiping. Hmm. When I'm worshiping or praising or praying or something, I, I, I visualize and I imagine the stuff that I'm saying coming to pass or certain things happening. And usually sometimes it's you or it can be God putting those thoughts in your head. He's giving you a visual. I call it the, um, you know how they say a third eye? Well, I think we do have a third eye, but I call it the, it's the Holy Spirit. So you have your natural eye where you can see things in the natural realm what's happening. And then you have things that the Holy Spirit will give you as a thought in your mind, like a picture image or a visualization of something. So that's why I said, for example, if I'm praying over a lot of people, uh, let's say God tells me to pray for somebody. Like I said, um, I'll probably most likely end up praying for their whole family to be saved and delivered and all of this extra stuff. So I'll imagine all those people in front of me. And as I'm speaking to myself, as I'm praying to God alone, I'll, um, I see like a light coming out of my mouth, like fire. And it's going over all of the people. And I'm believing in my heart that everything I'm praying and I'm asking God for is happening right then and there. Now, everything I pray for may not happen overnight, but I still put a seed out in the spirit. Now, that imagination is very spiritual. Don't ever think that your thought life is not spiritual. Most of the things that you think are from the spiritual realm. It could be the enemy projecting things into your mind about people that's not true. Sowing seeds about things and people that are not true about yourself, that's not true. Your thoughts are not always your thoughts. Please remember that. It's not. And of course, the Holy Spirit, one way he speaks to us is um, through a thought as well. He speaks to your spirit woman or your spirit man, and it comes up as a thought. You know, some people say, oh, my conscience is messing with me. Sometimes it's the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, it's not just your conscience, it's him. <laughs> so, um... But yeah, um, I'm very, very hyperactive in the spirit. I'm so hungry for supernatural things. I cannot even begin to explain to you. Like, I'm sick of the everyday okido Christian lifestyle. I hate that. That's why I'm not crazy about just, like, being out in the world and working and stuff. I, I could care less about that stuff. Like, God would really just have to command me, like, okay, daughter, you need to go work for me to just do it because my heart is just set on spiritual things so much like I don't care about nothing else and I don't care who don't like it honey I don't care who you are my heart is set on God and godly things alone I want to work for the kingdom of God that's what he put in me this it's all him you're not gonna want nothing like that unless God is the one who's doing it so that's all I care about in this life that's all I care about and I always told God, I was like, Lord, I told him that for years and I still mean it today. My mind has not changed. My heart has not changed. I said, Lord, all I care about is you. I want to do my ministry, which you put me here to do. And I would like for you to bless me with a husband. And I want him to be alongside with me to do those things. 
that's it. <laughs> Everybody, like, you know, the out of they got Christians that ask for so many different things, like, uh, you know, everybody got different desires and stuff according to, you know, what's in their heart and what they want God to do for them. But I don't care about nothing here. You know how the word says, set your mind on the things above and not the things of this earth. You you set your treasure up on the things above, not the things of this, her, of, of this earth, because wherever your treasure is, it's where your heart's going to be. And if your heart is already set in heaven before Jesus comes back, then you straight. And you got to worry about trying to divide yourself from the world and from Jesus, you know, you know, struggling on the fence when he comes back because your heart is already on spiritual things. It always was. Don't let people discourage you. Let me tell you this because people do this to me all the time. People make me feel so small because I'm not, my mind is not set on earthly things. I'm not saying don't work. I'm not saying don't go to school. I'm saying be led by the spirit with those things. Don't let nobody come in your ear just because most likely those people are not even that intimate with God. I'm just keeping it real with you. Now, God does tell people to do certain things like that, to go into an atmosphere, to go work or to go do this. But he's going to use them for ministry or he's trying to prepare them for something. Everything that God puts you through is for training and preparation for his kingdom, period, point blank. But when it comes to living an everyday life, just walking, you know, your everyday Christian life. First, there's no such thing as everyday Christian life for real, <laughs> because if you were a true Christian, and walking in the supernatural and the things of the spirit, your life wouldn't be normal in the first place. So there's no such thing as an everyday Christian life. But if people are really discouraging you because you're not working or because you don't want to work. And I mean, most likely it's not because you want to be a bomb. Most it's probably because you just you just love God and your heart is just set on God. There's nothing wrong with that. That's that's who I am. And I've let so many outsiders, so many outside influences make me feel some type of way like I'm not good enough. Or I'm small or I'm, you know, just just something stupid, just very belittling attitudes and words and stuff, because I'm not my heart. My mind is not where their heart and mind is. Your heart and your mind is in the world. That's why you see things the way you do. Well, you need to be doing this. You need to get this paper. You need to child. Look, I'm so supernaturally minded. If I ask God for some money, I believe that he's going to give it to me. I bet he'll give it to me. And like I said, um, it's not saying that you shouldn't work. I'm just trying to make a difference when it comes to people having their heart and their mind on God alone. Stop letting these worldly people who don't know God, they're not close to God, they barely understand his voice, try to tell you what you need to do with your life. They're carnal-minded. They're earthly-minded. They care about things here in this world. You know, that's that's not to speak down on those people, but it is what it is. And um, if we're not careful, you know, we'll let those people and their accusations be a breach in our spirit because... If, if God put that in your heart, if it's in your heart and it's in your mind to serve God and that's all that you care about and your heart is on spiritual things and you just think about Jesus all the time and you're just so passionate, you got this fire in your belly and just in your heart like about Jesus and it's just not in your heart to just be here like that and do things that every single person has been doing generation after generation after generation, going straight to hell, don't know God. God put that in you. Don't let nobody try to take this seed out of you. I can't stand when people do that. It disgusts me. It grieves my spirit. You know, they don't know any better. I do want to cry because it's just so discouraging. It really is. <laughs> That's why I'm like, God, please send me people who are like me. And the only people that's like you is the remnant, to be honest with you. It's not a lot of us. People who are really intimate with the Holy Spirit, who see things that way, the way the Bible tells you to see it, but you don't see it that way because the Bible says so. You see it that way because you've grown intimate with the author of the Bible. And you've gotten revelation from the Holy Ghost and what the scripture is saying, and it just came naturally for you. God puts that in your spirit. God is the one who turns your heart whichever way he wants it to turn. If that's in your heart to love him and just care about nothing but godly things like that, and you just want to do ministry, who do you think put it there? And we're letting all these naysayers just, oh, you need to work. You need to. Do. I don't need to do nothing but what God wants me to do, child. And I don't want to do nothing but what God wants me to do. If God told me to go to Africa today, I bet I'd be on a plane to Africa. Let's get it cracking. Because that's what my heart is at. I want to do missionary. I want to bring souls to Christ. I want to deliver some people. I want God to prepare and train me for that. All this other petty stuff, I could care less about. It's about to go up in flames. <laughs> very, very shortly. But, um... Y'all just don't know, like, I wish y'all could feel my spirit right now. Just, and nobody but God, it's really nothing to boast about at all. God put it there. God is the one who put those desires there in my spirit because I just want it so bad. Like, I just can't even, 
I can burst right now. I just want to, I just really want to bring souls to Christ. I just want to be, I want to walk in the supernatural. I want to be like the first and early church where, you know, but like I was saying about the church, I can tell they're very shy in that area. And, um, that, that can block us from our blessings. When you have a body of believer who, who body of believers who are not that comfortable to, um, just, just, just have supernatural things like that happen. I know it's not a common thing, but maybe it's not a common thing because we're not believing we don't come with full faith. We come with little faith. You know, they kind of shot away when they saw that nothing was happening when she was praying for me to get the baptism. You know, I, I wouldn't even let that discourage me. Like, if it ain't happening, honey, are we praying for it? Well, God's not a liar. Maybe it's just not his time yet, you know? But I'm just so like, my spirit is lit up. I'm lit up. It's like God just put a fire in me. And it's, it's kindled and it's just, just, it's still going, you know, it's going strong in my spirit, but it's not, it's not fulfilled yet. You know, and I know that he's training me and he's preparing me for something big. I'm just like, Lord, come on, man. I can't wait till I heal somebody. I'm talking about some real power, not just the gift of healing. I'm talking about the stuff that Jesus was doing. I want to get there. Um, I want to go all over the world and just minister to people and get them delivered and cast out. I just want to do so many things. I want to walk in the supernatural. This is how a Christian is supposed to be living every day and we're not. Something is completely wrong with that. And it has nothing to do with whether you're a babe or whether you're mature in the faith because the people that Jesus was teaching to cast out demons, they were babes. They were grown people running to Jesus saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us through your name. They were excited and dancing like, whoa, we just cast out a demon. Like, oh, my God. And Jesus told him, you know, well, don't um, don't rejoice that demons are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So those people were babes. They were not no mature. They just got. I'm not going to say saying because Jesus had died yet, but he was picking up random people. They were followers of Christ and all he did was teach them and they believed. So it's just, I've gotten over the part of, you know, being grieved by the body of Christ, not pursuing those things. Because I feel like if, if God wants you to do it, if you really his, he already put it in you. He already put that fire in you. We just hungry for it, for, you know, for now. But I'm just sick of this world. I just can't, I just cannot get enough of God. I just, oh God, I'm going to cry right now. Yep, it's coming. It's not enough. It's really not enough for me. I just. <sighs> you know how the word says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Like I've tasted it, honey. And I just, I just cannot get enough of God. Like it's not enough for me right now. And everything he's been doing this past week, little things, you know, like I, I was so excited in church tonight. And she was like, Brandy, I know you got something to say. You just about to hop out your chair. And I just shared something very small which is what I'm about to share with y'all right now. I was just like, I just love what God is doing. And I love how he's just acknowledging me, you know, as a believer and as a daughter, like the way he's just been speaking to me lately. And I don't have to always pray to him. I'll just, I'll just think it, you know, I'll think something in my heart and he'll respond. He'll give me an answer. <laughs> you know, I could be reading a book or I could be on social media and I'll see something and I know in my spirit, he'll communicate to my spirit that, you know, that's, that's him answering me. It's, it's just been crazy. But, um, she said that at church tonight, so I wanted to tell y'all, <laughs> that's what's been happening to me lately. And coincidentally, which we know there's no such thing as coincidence, it's God, honey, it's God. So she said that she mentioned how you don't even have to pray to God. You can just, you can just think something, you know, I was like, why would she say that? You know, why would she say, man, look at God. I just can't with him. He could, he gives confirmation on top of confirmation on top of confirmation with stuff, you know. And I was just like, he's been doing this the past week. Like, my cheeks hurt. I got some fat cheeks. Jesus makes me blush. <laughs> oh my God. I just, I can't. You see, stuff like that is supernatural. It excites me so much. Like, I'm so hungry for God. It's crazy, man. Like, I just. I'm so 
want to jump out and go do something. I don't know, it's a day that I would have a day. Yeah. But um I just wanna um I'm kind of discouraged about something. You know one thing I really do not like? I hate this to the depths of me. And if y'all ever deal with this, I'm the person that you need to come to because there's a lot of Christians who or just naysayers, period. They've never had a word from God that they really had to hold on to and walk by faith. They've never been in a situation where God told them something over and over and over and over again. And he's given you multiple signs and multiple confirmation on this. And you know, without a shadow of a doubt, you know, you know that you know that you know that God is speaking to you. And there's no coincidence when it comes to stuff like that, because he has to communicate to you in so many different ways just to get that seed planted in your heart. And you got these people around you. They've never experienced that. So they 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 question it and they try to take it away from you. And it really just breaks your spirit. That's what I'm going through right now. If any of y'all ever have this situation, please come to me. Do not go to I'm scared for y'all to go to some other Christian because people I don't want to brag or anything, but when you're really close to God and you're really intimate with him, I know his voice. I'm, I'm still learning more. I'm growing, obviously, because the way he's been speaking <laughs> lately, but I know God's voice. And I know how he does things when it comes to certain things in particular. And I know when he's giving a sign and a confirmation. And the best thing I can tell you is listen to how your spirit is bearing witness with that thing. Because the Holy Spirit is going to commute to you, communicate to you through your spirit woman or your spirit man, you know. And honestly, it's, it's really not even something that has to be taught because the Bible says that you don't need any man to teach you nothing. The anointed one is in you. The Holy Spirit is going to teach you. That's how I learned God's voice, the Holy Spirit. You shouldn't have to ask somebody, how do I, <laughs> y'all still ask me. I got so many videos already talking about it, but I'm just let you know this. You don't have to ask somebody how to hear the Holy Spirit, because he going to let you know when he's speaking to you. It's God's job, not even just his job, just who he is. He is the truth. You will know that you know that you know without a shadow of a doubt when God is speaking to you, when he's trying to get your attention, because that's your creator. Everything that is that that makes you who you are, your spirit, your mind, your body, your soul, your intellect, your character, your personality is subject to God because you're made in his image. So if he's trying to get your attention, I don't care if it's the smallest thing. There's a part of you that's going to bear witness with it. You won't know it's the Lord. You don't have to go and ask me or somebody else on YouTube or your pastor. How do I hear God? God going to let you know. Go to God and ask him to speak to you. Ask him. I don't want to say teach you, teach you, because just, just ask him to speak to you in a way where you're going to know and understand that it's him. And, you know, ask him to just speak to you and just really teach you, you know, his voice that if the enemy comes in like a flood or other people try to come or the enemy sends people to try to discourage you. It's not it's going to be like walking under the bridge, honey, because you know that God spoke to you. And I don't want to hear what you got to say about it, what you got to say, what you got to say. All of this, this discouragement and, um, you know, it. I don't want to say it makes God angry. It really depends on the individual's heart and their intent when it comes to unbelief. And, you know, when it comes to making God angry and stuff, but he does say in Hebrews that without faith, it's impossible to please him. So, you know, between you and God alone, when God is speaking to you, you don't have to go ask all these other Christians. Sometimes, you know, he will definitely use other Christians for confirmation. But if you keep doing that, God may allow you to be deceived because you keep doing that. And you know, he's speaking to you. You know, that's no is the key word. K-N-O-W, you know. If you got to question it, well, time, nine times out of ten, you already know it's him. Because he got your attention if you're questioning it. Now, he will give you confirmation and signs. And once again, it's going to bear witness with your spirit. Because things don't, that's, that's not just coincidence, you know. I hate that. That's the enemy that places a deception on all of humanity, calling something a coincidence. Satan even knows that there's no such thing. Because not, sometimes it's him giving the signs, you know. Satan knows there's no such thing as a coincidence. Everything is spiritual. This realm that we're on right now in the natural, this is like the delivery room, I call it. I call it the delivery room because everything that happens here, everything that you see, if you're walking by sight, you're kind of walking in, uh, let's just say you're late <laughs> because this is just a, um, this is just a manifestation of what's taking place in the spiritual. 
every single thing. This is this whole world, this whole system, every every realm you could possibly think of is always active, always running, always going according to the prayers of the saints in witchcraft. I'm just being completely honest with you. Everything that God sends out or declares in the spirit will be manifested here. That's why he tells you don't walk by sight. You have to walk by faith. You don't live here. Yeah, you're in, they're, you're in this flesh. You know, you do see things with your natural eye, but God has to train you in your spiritual eye because you live up here now. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. You walk in the spirit. You can't go by what you see no more. Ever. Period. <laughs> And even if you do go by what you see sometimes, like, for example, if I see something about somebody and I discern they have a demonic spirit or God, the Holy Spirit may just start flooding things about that person to me. Even still, OK, I see it and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. So he made it spiritual once again. Everything is spiritual, essentially. But now I'm about to go home in the spirit and I'm going to take care of that situation. I'm going to pray for you. I pray for your salvation and for your deliverance because I know that nothing's going to change. What I'm seeing is not going to change unless I go and pray about it and I take care of it in the spirit where everything is birthed in the first place. So this room right here is delivery room. You don't walk here. You don't live here. He you have to believe that you do not live here. When Jesus said, I'm not of this world, he was talking about just, just this material, this, this earthly realm. Yeah, he was here in the flesh, but he was letting them know, I don't dwell here. There's two, there's two pieces in me. There's my flesh and there's my spirit. And he came here perfect. So, I mean, he was always repping the kingdom, period. He was always up there, you know, in the spiritual plane in the Holy Spirit. You're seated in heavenly places with Jesus. That's who you are. You're royalty. You're in the kingdom of God right now. You don't abide in this material world. This stuff is deteriorating. This whole world, everything, all of, you know, the riches and the money and everything that we just, you know, covet after here is deteriorating. And it's just the manifestation of what's going on in the spiritual if you really want something done, then you need to take care of it in the spirit. You need to go ask the Father. You have not because you ask not. You want something to change, you need to take care of it in the spirit. That's where you live. But um, it's just, it's it's just annoying me because there's there's something that um. God's been speaking to me about and confirming, like, I mean, he's doing his part. He's just the awesomest dad anybody could ever have. He really, really is. And I hate when I share it with somebody and they doubt it. And your doubt discourages me. Not so much because I'm not trained in faith. I'm being trained in faith actually right now as we speak, to be honest with you. But I just, I, I'm so used to being one with life and that life is Jesus. I'm, I'm so used to being one with him. I'm so used to being in the spirit and hearing the Holy Spirit all the time. It's like when I get around these people who don't know him like that and they speak negatively, they speak doubt and they speak unbelief because they think with their carnal mind and they see, they walk by sight. They don't have the Holy Spirit or maybe they do have the Holy Spirit. They just choose to walk in this flesh. They don't represent home at all. And when they speak against what God told me, or they speak against, you know, what God told you specifically, you know, gave you a word of something, and he's encouraging you in that area, and that person just, God, that just grieves my spirit so much. I hate, I don't like people around me that's not believers, I guess you could say. I want some believers around me, okay? If you come to me and you tell me God told you something, honey, look, I don't know what you and God talked about. And Father, you know, his thoughts are higher than mine. His ways are not my ways. If he told you, I'm, I'm, I'm going to encourage you in the Lord, okay? I really, really am. And I'm going to be that believer around you that you need. And I praise God because God knows when I need stuff right on time. I had a sister in Christ. She's a, a subscriber. And she messaged me last month in January. She messaged me a long uh, message about my word of marriage. And she, it was crazy how everything she was saying, I could tell that she was in the same spirit with me. She knew and she understood. 
versus other believers who are like, are you sure it's God? Are you sure it's God, girl? I don't know about that. No, she understood perfectly. I don't even know this girl. She watched my video and heard me talking about it. It messaged me a long message, January 30th. It was telling me her testimony and her story, how she went to the saints. I mean, it was just crazy. I'm like, see, God, there's very, very few people that are really in the spirit of the remnant like that. They know God's voice. They know how he works. So he sent that girl to me to encourage me. Don't let the enemy message your mind like that. Don't let these naysayers get to you because you know that I've spoken to you. And I just sent this sister to confirm it, basically. <laughs> He'll do that for you. Because he knows how, I don't even want to say it's hard to walk by faith. It's, <sighs> I'm going to say challenging. He knows how challenging it is because of what you're surrounded by. Unbelievers. Anytime you get excited about God, somebody got something to say or something to do that just kills your spirit. And sometimes they may not mean to, but it, it still happens. That's why you got to keep that word guarded, honey. Like you, you got to be like, your, your relationship with God got to be like a rock for real. Because they're going to come. Especially if the enemy don't want to see it come to pass, he going to send them. He going to try his best to knock you off of that rock that is Jesus. And God is not a liar. What he promised you, he's going to do it. The only thing that would hinder it is unbelief. You know. I can't stand that though. But, <sighs> my prayer is that God just, you know, puts us together. Even if it's just, I know God has his reason for us being scattered the way that we are. He does. But I just pray that he really just puts us with other believers who know him i mean I, i'm not just know like i don't even mean that in a religious term i mean like you really people that your spirit really bears witness with that you know know the holy spirit there's no way they could know the things they know unless he shared it with them people like that because they understand spiritual things they understand when god's speaking something to you and a rima word and all this different stuff you know it's, it's not natural it's not supposed to be natural it's spiritual your spirit has to be trained to hear and understand these things. And spiritual things are spiritually discerned. The only person who can discern it for you is the Holy Spirit. Now, when you got them kind of people around you, you can walk on cloud nine and not stumble. Because they on cloud nine with you. And cloud nine is, is the Holy Spirit. You're in the spirit, not in your flesh. Discouraging somebody because of what God told them. And you don't understand it because you're trying to think logically. Well, I don't understand what that is. That's what they do. Well, I don't know about that. You know, this and this happened. It can't be God if it's going that bad. Oh, shut up. <laughs> like, I mean, did these people read there? I'll be wondering, like, do y'all read y'all Bible every time God told somebody something that didn't come to pass that quick? Or they had to go through something to get it, or they had to fight to get it. It doesn't mean God didn't speak to them, you know. But the naysayers, man, they, they're just a grievance in the spirit. They really, really are. I don't know if it's God. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's the Lord. I, I don't see it. No, you're right. You don't see, child. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm going to pray for you that you get eyes to see and ears to hear what the Lord is speaking to the churches because I can't stand that mess. You know what I sounded like just now? Y'all watch Key and Peel. Key and Peel is so funny to me, but Keegan. Wait, no, Peel, Jordan Peel, the dark skin one. Y'all need to go watch that episode Mirrors with Jordan with Key and Peel on YouTube. Oh my God, that's the voice that he was using. It was so freaking funny. Where are you, detective? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I cannot get enough. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Where my detective? <laughs> uh, detective. <laughs> I'm not playing. That's what he was doing. Go watch it. It's on YouTube. It's so funny, man. It's so freaking. Funny. 
y'all need to help a sister out. I'm sorry. I've been ministering to y'all. I always feel some type of way about it because I'm like, I don't do this for money at all. But I've got 6K subscribers. Now, I mean, I need some type of donation in the name of Jesus. Child, I don't care if you give $10 or $25. Actually, I do care if you get $0.25. Cents. Don't try me. <laughs> but help a sister out, please. Please do. Please just be show your thankfulness and your graciousness, honey, because the stuff that I teach, you ain't going to learn it in a church. Let's just keep it real. That's why you're on YouTube, and that's why you subscribe, because you're not getting it where you need to be getting it. So please help us sister out and give a donation in the name of Jesus. <laughs> don't play me. I'm so serious. And don't ask me what I'm going to spend it on either. Child, I don't even know yet, to be honest. What do I need? I need some clothes. I ain't been shopping in such a long time. I really have not. I don't know. I mean, I have a PayPal account. I don't like using PayPal because I'm stingy. I mean, it's not being stingy because it's my money. It's being given to me. But I just don't like how PayPal just takes a certain percentage out. I don't care. Like, it's not for you. It's for me. So that's why when people want to give me something, and I got a sister in Christ, she donates faithfully. I mean, she she's just a sweetheart. She really does. She is younger than me. Susan, hey Susan, this girl is sending about two to six hundred dollars whenever she can. I don't know where she be getting it from because she work a part time job, but I guess she must love her some brandy, honey. But she be doing it. But um, no, I always tell people to just Western Union because I don't have time for PayPal and all this other. PayPal is not my pal because they take my money, so I don't use PayPal. I tried the other thing, the GoFundMe. I didn't like that because I I don't like nothing that take a percentage out of something. Give me all that belongs to me. But this is my blessing, honey. My financial blessing in the name of Jesus. I don't want nobody trying to take a percentage because you wouldn't preach it on YouTube, PayPal. So whenever you start getting a YouTube ministry and you start ministering to the people, maybe you can get a little percentage of what I've been doing. I don't think so in the name of Jesus. Hmm. But um, no. Western Union. Hit me up. Message me. Email me. And we can discuss Western Union. Actually, no. I don't like West. See, I'm just difficult. I just found out recently that with Western Union that y'all have to pay extra money just to send it. I didn't know that before. I'm sorry. But I don't know what we're going to do, child. I really don't. <sighs> but, um. I'm trying to hold on to my promise. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I've been, I've been getting discouraged off and on. I have. Um, mostly because of the enemy and what he's been putting in my mind. Honestly, dreams. Pray for me, please. Just pray pray that God, whatever it is that he promised me, that I just keep believing and that he keeps speaking to me about it. And that I just stay, that I don't waver to the left or the right, you know, that I don't be double-minded because the Lord says a double-minded man will not receive anything from him. So I'm kind of by myself with this and he's training me in faith, but I'm like one of the wise virgins that's waiting on Jesus. You know, they know the word and they believe what he said, but or maybe a foolish virgin, I don't know. I'm just kind of getting impatient and sad and discouraged and to the point where you just stray off and just forget the promise completely. And then when it comes, you're not ready. some witchcraft spirits against me and um not just witches i mean i'm sure i have witches against me too but witchcraft spirits they manifest through different people vessels of dishonor that come against me for no reason at all it's, it's the creepiest thing in the world it makes absolutely no sense it's not even the people they may have a nasty heart, but it's it's really those spirits that just come into them. They got a doorway open somewhere, and the enemy is just able to just use them like like a straight crackhead child, just attacking your soul, your spirit, just just discouraging you as a believer. 
I have so many of those witchcraft spirits against me through these people. It's annoying. But you know what? You know what that tells you? You got a position in the kingdom and the enemy don't like that. If you wasn't worth fighting, the enemy wouldn't be fighting you. So maybe that's showing me who I am in the spirit and what I'm capable of. Because Satan does not like me. I don't like him either. I really don't. If I was privileged by the father, I'd slap him a couple times. He stole from me way too many times. He stole friendships from me. He stole husbands from me. He stole so many things from me. And I'm just about ready to kill him and strangle him. Just be robbing saints, man. The enemy stays just robbing all the time. I want to rob him. I'm going to rob you of some people that you got in your kingdom. How you like that? Let me get everybody saved and piss you off. You want to go toe-to-toe? Let's do it. Come steal my stuff. You condemned bastard. If y'all ever want to give me gifts, I'm going to just keep it real with you because we all family. I don't see y'all as subscribers. Some of y'all are, but some of y'all be tripping for real. But family, if y'all ever want to send me a gift, I love incense. I really, really do. My favorite scents are sandalwood, patchouli, coconut, nag champa. Um, I love the, the woodsy type scents. I love it so much. I cannot get enough. I like sweet stuff like brown sugar. Almond, milk, and honey, or um, almond, you know, things like that. Uh, brown sugar, vanilla. I love stuff like that. Coconut. I don't like that citrus crap. I can't stand citrus mess. Floral, it really depends. But, um, and that's just, I don't know. Because I got some people to be like, I want to send you something. I want to give you something. Well, honey, go ahead, honey. We all family. You want to send a sister something? Go ahead. That's what I like. Send me that. Um, I think in 2013, I had a sister in Christ give me a birthday gift. She got me some leopard print flip flops. <laughs> and she got me a little letter that she wrote me. I still have it up on my shelf over there. Yep, y'all be so sweet sometimes. I reached 6K subscribers. It just keeps going up. But that's good, though. Some people are being drawn to God, you know. I still, I really did not think my channel was going to get this big. I remember the day I started. My first video, if you go watch it on YouTube, I was just like, oh my God, I just, so God was talking to me today. And I was so vain. I just kept. so different than what I used to be on YouTube, man. It's crazy. But I didn't think my channel would get this big. I guess I still really haven't accepted it. I don't think. Well, I, yeah, I guess 6K is kind of big. But no, just the main videos that are really popular on YouTube. I'll type in a video and I'll see my face on like the side part. <laughs> like I typed in, I was watching a video about John Todd last night. And I saw my face. The video I made like two years ago talking about him and something else. I was like, I look so different. It's crazy. Or just like uh, my videos that have a lot of views, like uh, the Beyonce dreams. This don't get a lot of attention because everybody be looking up Beyonce on YouTube. But masturbation, Obama dreams, of course, you know. That's the videos I'm most famous for. But I don't look at the views. The views are like 12K views or 35K. I'm like, God. You mean to tell me 12,000 people knew I was playing with myself to the point? <laughs> it was a testimony video, but I just be thinking it sometimes. When I see that many views, I cannot watch that video again. It's just something like some videos I can watch and I can listen to, and it's not even me speaking, it's the Holy Spirit. So I receive from my own video. But some of them, when I'm just kind of vlogging and being myself, like that masturbation video, I can't watch it. It's. I wonder what I would do if I was in a room full of people and they just clicked on my video to start watching it. I don't know what I would do. But the numbers are growing. I hope I get to 12K or something. I'm playing with aspirin again. I just like the way aspirin tastes. 
I think I belong on that show, uh, My Strange Addiction. They be eating chalk and powder, nail polish. I don't even use aspirin. I don't even know what aspirin is for. It's for headaches, right? They don't do and the aspirin never did nothing for me. So I'll just be snacking on it. <sighs> they had a cute little baby in church tonight. That baby was so cute. I always wanted like a little mixed kid. I love it when people blend. I feel like God made all these beautiful races, so I'm not blending like I don't like when people stay within their own uh nationality i mean i guess it's, it's common to you you know especially if it's like a traditional thing with your family y'all want to stick with with that particular thing white stick with whites mexican stick with me honey everybody is just so beautiful i wish that we could all just mix and just intermingle and i always wanted like a little um i was like i wish god would give me a chinese or asian husband because i mean black and these people blazing whatever you want to call them honey they be so pretty people you can't lie i mean for real Pretty, pretty people. I don't know what it is about black and Asian, but it just be the prettiest little mixture, honey. Just perfect then. I'm like, man, God has made some beautiful people for real. I always wanted to mix though. They had this cute little baby in church tonight. He was a cute little light skinned baby. He had the big brown eyes and was jumping. I mean, just a beautiful personality. And I just, I was trying not to cry because I want a baby. I didn't before, but now I do. Just weird. I want, um, I want a boy and a girl. I'll be praying for it too. I don't want them to have eyes like me. <laughs> They're like, why you want them eyes like you? That's vain. It's not vain. I just want my child to have eyes like me. I love hazel eyes. I think they're so pretty. Or like a chestnut brown, the light chestnut brown, the little red in it. I would love it. But um, that baby was so cute tonight. So precious oh my god i just love how god makes things like that they're just little bitty tiny humans 